I don't know if you have the same problem as me, but often when I'm working in my journal, I have a tendency to kind of just default to the same styles of lettering time and time again, which, you know, there's no problem in having our favorites because they're favorites for a reason, but sometimes we, went, we might want to change things up, you know, get a little out of our comfort zone, do something a little bit more interesting. So today we're going to have a look at some different header ideas or kind of title ideas that you can use in your journal. Some of them will also be suitable as kind of subheaders, some are really mainly just going to be for kind of like the top title of a page or I suppose you could put it at the bottom. I usually like to call them titles rather than headers because I do have a tendency to move them around but we're going to have a look at some ideas. If you want to draw along with us then make sure that you have some supplies. These are the ones that I am probably going to be using. Ones that for certain I know I'll be using are going to be my Papermate Flare, mainly because it's a really nice quality of black and you'll actually be able to see it when I put it down on the page. I'll also be using a Tombow. I've picked a yellow because it's a bright punchy color, which means it's going to contrast really nicely with the black. So again, it'll be really visible. You'd probably be more inclined to pick something that's actually going to tie in either with the color palette you're already working with or something that you enjoy. So if you don't enjoy yellow, you don't have to enjoy yellow and use it in this and that's fine. I'm also probably, not confirmed, but probably going to be using a pencil and eraser at some point. Sometimes it's really beneficial to sketch things out in a way that you can erase them before you commit to going in with pen, just to make sure that you've got your placement right, make sure that you've got your sizing right. We want to make sure that things look the way we want them to look before it kind of gets to a point where you can't really get rid of them. So possibly, unsure, but we'll see what happens. I've also nabbed myself a Papermate Inkjoy Gel. It's just a black writing pen. It's my favorite, so that's the one that I default to using. This one in particular for any subheaders would be a good one because it is a thinner nib. Um, not thin by some people's standards, but thin compared to the Papermate Flare, so probably will use this guy as well. And I also grabbed a dot marker and a ruler. If you don't have a dot marker, totally fine. You can totally draw little circles with a Tombow. I just prefer this one because it is really easy. Alrighty, so getting on into it. The easiest way to really think about doing your headers is actually just changing up your lettering style in general. Like what kind of font are you using in your journal? So there are plenty of font inspiration online. In fact, I find the going to free font websites is a really good way to find different lettering styles, especially the types of websites that you can go to to actually like type in a word or a phrase and it shows you what it would look like in that font. It means you don't have to download the font yourself, which is kind of nice, especially if you're like, you know, trying to limit your use of space on your computer, but you also get the exact kind of text or an exact reference of what you want to create in your journal. So that can be really, really useful, especially if you're going for lettering styles that are kind of tied to a specific theme. I mean, I often find that when I go looking for font inspiration, I find fonts that aren't necessarily within my wheelhouse of being able to recreate, or if I were to recreate them, it would take me a very long time. For those ones, you just download them, print them off, and stick them in your journal. Totally fine. You don't have to draw everything yourself, but today we are going to focus on drawing everything yourself. So my stock standard kind of go-to header, I'm going to tilt the journal because we want to put it in a way that's comfortable to write with, is just to do kind of like a regular cursive that's a little bit more kind of exaggerated in terms of the bigs and smalls, okay? So by this, I mean that I would do a quite large first letter, right? So I'm doing a kind of curly H here. You see that it effectively looks like a J and an I like stuck together. So H for header. And then when it comes to doing the lowercase letters, the ones that would all stick on one line if you were kind of practicing your writing, those ones are done quite small. Anything that would come over or under, like a D would come over or a G would come under, those ones are kind of exaggerated. So E would be little, A would be little. Then when we get to D, D is going to be exaggerated. So we've got little circle for D, but then big loopy bit. And then a little E. And you can also exaggerate the R because I like it to come up and above the line. So you can see it's really just regular cursive with some parts that are a little bit more fun, 
a little bit bigger than they'd usually be. All right. In terms of an actual kind of like reference of this lettering style, this is based on what's called Australia script. You can find it online. Or if you're part of the team with capital T, then we do have a lettering practice sheet and that one is available in our resource library. So all goods with that one. I like this kind of style. It's just kind of basic. It's just an exaggerated kind of uplifted form of my regular cursive. Regular cursive is also a way that I really like to do headers. Uh, in particular, you find that a lot of people will tend to just use lowercase when they're doing this style. Uh, it's a personal preference. If you want to do uppercase, that's fine too. So we can just do a regular everyday cursive. I find that it ends up looking quite fun. We need to make sure that I spell things right as we go through. So regular cursive also works well for headers. You can add some embellishment to it if you want with some maybe like line work or some little bits and pieces of color. I'm just going to use my Tombow here and I'm going to press down the point to the page. So it kind of makes like what effectively looks like a little flower petal. And I'm just going to do three of those at one end, kind of like little confetti. And we can do three over here as well. Just pressing it on that nib to make those little little lines. It's just a little bit cute, right? It doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to be like really hard to do. You can just do things that are very simple like this and it's all good. Another way that we could do this, like if we just wanted to use regular cursive, right? We're keeping it super simple for this kind of thing, is just take what would usually be an upstanding citizen or very kind of like straight up and down lettering and italicize it, right? This gives us a kind of different style to play with, but it's still done in very much the same way. Now, depends on how you like to write as to how you're going to get it to be italicized. I, again, just find that turning my book is usually the easiest and comfortablest way for me to write. So it's just taking letters that would usually be straight up and down and putting them on an angle. Like they're getting blown over in the wind. D. E. R. So it's the same type of cursive, same kind of letter forms, same little curly loops where the curly loops are. It's just on an angle. All right. Yes, exactly. From a stand up citizen to a got to lean on a pole kind of citizen because they've got a little drunk lean going. But easy headers like that, totally fine. Like I said, this one is my default. But if we're looking to do something a little bit different, looking to get a little bit elevated, all right, uh, we do have a couple of different options here. I am not necessarily going to be putting these in any specific order. So it is going to just be like a whole bunch of different practice pieces that we're just going to jot down on the page. So First one we're going to do is some stuff with just like a pass through of the yellow pen. Recommendation, if you are going to do a line of color with <laughs> your black line work, make sure that you're either using a pen that is not water soluble for your black line work, otherwise you will smear things everywhere, or put your color down first, all right? It can be kind of hard to know where to put your color down, like where to start and stop. So in that case, you can go in first with a pencil for where your title will actually end up. So if we go in first with pencil and we're just going to do a simple all caps right header, so H E A D E R, just so that we can kind of see the spacing of that. And then when we do our pass over with the pen, we kind of know where to start and stop. All right, I'm just going to do a simple line through. So to do this, I'm actually going to rotate my journal so that I can put this line in in the most comfortable way possible. Uh, for me, that is pulling the pen towards myself. I don't do very well trying to go horizontally. So pulling the pen towards myself, going straight through that, trying to apply fairly consistent pressure. But this style, it doesn't really need to be perfect. It kind of looks a little bit nicer, a little bit cute if it is a little bit imperfect, right? If we wanted perfection, we would just, you know, type our journal. We wouldn't try and handwrite it kind of a thing. <laughs> Always run into the issue of not being able to erase the pencil after putting down the color. Yep, 100%. Completely understand that. So at this point, we could go and erase this and we'll, we'll erase it so that we can have a look at that. So. Mm -mm -mm. So we can see that the pencil that was not gone over by the pen, all right, I'm going to bring this up so you guys can see it. The part of the pencil that was not touched by the Tombow has pretty much gone, but you can see a kind of very faint outline of where that pencil was in terms of where it sits with the yellow Tombow. That is very common of a problem. If that is going to be something that is probably going to happen and going to bother you, make sure that you get your pencil work effectively perfect 
<laughs> before you go and put the pen over the top because then you can just make sure that you very much stick to that pencil when it comes to putting the black line work over the top because if the black line work is over the top of the pencil you won't see the pencil anymore um other things that you can do is making sure that you use a very faint color of lead. So my one that I'm using here is a 2H pencil, and I like it because it does do very faint line work. And that one I find erases a lot nicer compared to something like, I don't know, a 6B pencil or something like that. All right. From here, though, we're just going to go in and put all of those capitals over the top. It is a very simple header, all right? nothing too fancy. It's effectively just a stripe of color. We've just done it in such a way that we're not going to ruin our journal by making smudge marks <laughs> because we put the color down first. I also find that these types of headers are really nice for when you're doing a kind of um line across the top of the page, like the whole way across. Let's see if I can find you an example like here so this is my go wild journal um so doing a whole line of color the whole way across your journal and then writing over the top of it and as you can see you don't have to just do like a simple all caps you can do something a little bit more you know, fancy a little bit nicer with that as well so let's have a let's have a look at that too so if we do a line of color again just trying to apply consistent pressure and possibly go a little bit straighter than this guy did. It's all right if it's cattywampus. Then we can also do a kind of regular cursive over that if it wants to be, you know, a little bit, a little bit special. H, E, A, D, E, R. And in terms of some ways that you could change this one up, you can change the positioning of where the header is over the yellow line. So you can see that this yellow line is kind of slightly above where the line of text would be. That is one way you can change it, like changing exactly where that kind of lines up. Um, you could make your line thicker or thinner. That totally works as well. You could do that kind of italicized lettering style, like we said. Or you could do something like foligraphy. Now, we're not going to get into a lot about foligraphy here or like fake calligraphy because we do have a separate live stream where we went through all of the basics on that, uh, talking about the different letter forms and how you'd actually write them out. So we're not going to really talk about that here, but you can do that as well with this, like we kind of saw in the in the Go Wild journal. Okay, so that one's nice and simple, nice and easy. One of the lettering styles that has been like the most popular for the longest time, and I totally vibe with it because I used to use it very often too, is doing a combination of uppercase and lowercase in the same header, just using different pens, all right? So for this one, you would go in usually with your colored marker or like lighter color first. So for me, that's going to be the colored marker because it's yellow versus black. And we're going to do an all caps header. So H, E, A, D, E, uh, when you do this, you're going to want to try and make sure that your letter forms are fairly consistent in terms of their width, all right? So how wide each letter is, we want to try and remain fairly consistent with that, and it can be very useful to use the dot grid to help you. Oftentimes, what I will do for this one, which I didn't really do here because this is just an example, is I will use a full dot grid box across for each letter form, and I'll do a half box gap between them. Uh, do I have an example in this journal? No, I don't think so. So we'll just write it out here in pencil. So if the H sits here, taking up the full width of the dot grid box, then I'll start the E halfway in to the next dot grid box. And because I want it to be a full dot grid across, I'll bring it from the halfway point of this one over to the halfway point of the next one, just to try and make it so that it looks very consistent. All right. Um, this just helps for when we go over the top of this using the cursive lowercase. So, get rid of this guy. Like we said before, we're kind of trying to combine lowercase and uppercase in the header that we're doing here. So we have our uppercase in already. When it comes to doing the lowercase, oftentimes you will see it done with cursive. So people will do the same letter as is on the header. So like H on top of the H, E on top of the E, and just kind of extend their cursive out. So the letter forms themselves are quite small, and then we have kind of a fairly long tail between them. So if we do H, you can see H is quite small there, 
and it goes all the way over to the E. It's very hard to do this while I stop, so apologies if it looks a little bit janky, but E goes all the way over to the A, to the D, to the E, and to the R. So we're effectively just laying the letters over the top of the ones that we already have there, kind of as that like double up thing, which I think looks quite cute, right? So and that is one way that we could do that. You can also do it with like, you know, just the kind of lowercase without the cursive as well. So if we chuck this one down here, trying to make sure that we've evenly spaced these letters out. So doing that full dot grid box across for each letter and then a half dot grid box gap between them. For some of these letters, it'll end up looking a little bit strange. So you don't have to do it for every single one. It's just kind of a rule of thumb that I use. For instance, M and W tend to be wider letters. So you might need to fudge around with it there a little bit. But H, E, D, E, R. And then we can just go over the top of that using just a regular lowercase so not something that is actually kind of cursived together connected just a little h e a d e r so similar style just a little bit different still looks pretty cute let's say you've been using a variation of the double header nice and super chunky block letters and a brush script over the top love that yeah i think it'd be very cute e and instantly your mind finished with e E to X, D, Y. Oh my gosh. That looks like maths. So we've got those two as a possibility, which is quite nice. Also, if we think about the kind of extended cursive, because we kind of you know touched that on that here, but we haven't done it up the top. That's also another style of lettering you can do. This is effectively where you just really stretch out your cursive forms. So if we try and do this one with pencil first, so I can kind of show you roughly what it would look like before I commit to the pen. So we've got an H cursive. I'm just going to do an italicized cursive. So there's the H, but then rather than writing the E right next to it, we kind of leave a bit of a gap, put the E over here, then leave a gap, put the A over here, leave a bit of a gap, put the D here, and so on and so forth. Then when it comes to joining these letters together, like you can see, you're kind of just swooping across from one to the next. It's just kind of stretching out the cursive, but the letter forms themselves are kind of still, you know, a standard kind of width or standard kind of size there. It's just the connection that gets dragged out. If you try and actually drag the letters out, often they will end up looking a little bit strange, a little bit not readable. We still want your header to be readable. Um, you know, a lot of the time when we put a header on the page, it doesn't really matter for that month. But when you come back to a page, it's usually nice to be able to decipher what you were talking about. So in terms of actually penning this one in, now as we have the individual letters spaced out, we're just going to connect those up with that sweeping line. So each. You guys are going to get so sick of me spelling out the word header. So I'm going to try and not spell it out every single time. But then if I stuff up the spelling, just know that that's the reason. <laughs> e -R. Cute. Not too bad. I didn't perfectly line up with the pencil here, so I would have to erase it. Make sure that if you are going to erase your pencil after the fact, you give it appropriate time to dry. We don't want to make a mess of your beautiful header. I'm just going to leave mine for now because it is just an example. Alrighty, other possibilities. So one of the ways that we can do this like, is just by giving it a pop of color without really having to do a lot to it. So for this one, you would literally just write the header down as you want it to be using your color pen and then go over the top of it with a slightly thinner dark pen, All right? So if we put in our header here, and we're just gonna do upstanding cursive, A, D, E, R. And for this one, I'm not going to use the flare just because I think it might be a little bit too thick. I'm instead going to use the Paper Mate Ink Joy. I will say that if you are doing this style, make sure that you let this dry first. Otherwise, you may have some kind of feathering happening. And we don't really want our kind of black 
ink work to bleed out from wherever we place it. I mean, maybe you do, but for, for this case, I don't want that. It is not my personal preference. So drying, drying time is good. Over the top, trying to make sure that we don't cover up every single part of the color because we want the color there to add a little bit of like visual interest, I suppose, to the lettering. But we do want to try and keep it pretty much central in terms of where we've put down that yellow already. You can, of course, just go over the top with your uh, yellow, but make sure that you're using a black pen that isn't going to smudge and smear and all of that kind of stuff. Let's see. You could use title or banner or caption or headline if header gets too repetitive. Good point. I also kind of like the idea of just everything on the page saying header. <laughs> just, just another problem unto itself. Let's see. Other possibilities that we have. Uh, one of my favorites, which is quite cute, is just to put, we're going to use a dot mark for this. If you don't have a dot marker, you can just draw small circles, is just put individual letters in individual circles. So H E A D E R. And again, for this one, I would probably be inclined to use a thinner pen than the paper mate, especially if you want to write inside of the circle. So you can just put that one in. Doesn't need to be too neat or anything because I usually just use my regular all caps for that one. Um, you can also use the dot markers to uh, actually form the letters as well if you wanted to um, because they have that kind of rounded thicker nib. It's a really nice way to do kind of like bubble letter type things. So if we put the bubble-esque kind of letter here, I will say there, uh, there is a tendency for these pens to be quite juicy if you write with them rather than just dotting with them. So do be mindful of that when putting it down on your paper. We don't want things to bleed through. So H E A D E R. The nice part about using this for your bubble letter rather than a Tombow is that it's a lot easier to get consistent line sizes. I find that if I use a Tombow, anytime I do a horizontal line, for instance, like the bar in the H or the E, they have a tendency to end up thinner, which like is fine if that's the style you're going for. But if you want something a little bit more consistent, then this is a little easier. From here though, I would usually like to outline them. Uh, so this can be done just in your regular black pen, or you can use something thinner. Uh, I usually opt for something thinner, just because I prefer the way it looks. But this is just a very easy way of doing a kind of block letter or a bubble letter, I suppose, where you don't have to try and, like, I'm going to say, like, do the line work first, effectively. Because if you try and do the line work first, I always find that certain letters just end up looking a little bit strange, especially things like S, because when you try and do the S, it's like you're changing the pen direction quite often. So you have a, more opportunities to, I suppose, make it look inconsistent in terms of the width of the actual letter form, which is not, not really what we want. Now, when I'm doing this kind of outlining, I do typically try and take my time. I try and make sure that I'm kind of sticking to the edge of the letter as best as possible. Right now, we're just doing an example though, so I'm being a little bit more haphazard with it. But take your time. It's all good if it takes time, right? Journaling's fun. We're allowed to take time for things that take fun. Take fun? Are fun. Yeah, all that. Let's see. So... Another thing that you can do, especially with this kind of like bubble lettering style, and in particular, if you want to make it look a little bit more kind of 3D, is by adding shadows and highlights and stuff. So I would typically add a little kind of like white gel pen to this, just like a stripe down any of the longer sides to make it look like it was a little bit more three-dimensional. You don't have to, but it's just a cute little detail kind of a thing. So... Bubble letter, looking pretty cute. Um, we can also go and add embellishments to that if we want to, but we're just going to leave it as it is. I think it looks pretty good. Other ways that we could change our lettering styles up, uh, you don't actually have to keep all of your letters the same in terms of their sizing. I mean, you don't have to keep them in terms of the same like, style at all if you don't want to. But one of the ways that I used to do this is just by doing all caps where every, every second letter, third letter, would kind of change the level it was on. So H where the E is up, 
the A is down, the D is full capital again, and then we just repeat through. So E, R, and you can add some visual interest in amongst those. I would usually use little dots, so I do like a little circle and a dot under the first E and also under the second E and then above the A and the R, which is kind of cute. It's another way, that, like you're just really playing with capital letters again, but it looks a little bit more interesting. Visual interest, we love that. That's what we're aiming for. All right, thinking about that dot marker again. So we did a simple kind of just dotted, you know, dotted and then letters written inside of it. Uh, you can do the same kind of thing again. One, two, three, four, five, six, but add a little bit more embellishment to it, either by putting like an outline of those circles if you wanted to, or you could just kind of make it look like a string of beads, just string them together with some black line work, which is another way that you can kind of incorporate it into a border that you might have on the page. So if you kind of go around the page uh, that that's something that you could do with it you don't have to stick to all caps either we could do lowercase we could do cursive type lettering if we wanted to so we're just going to do h e a d e r looks pretty sweet right it's it's effectively the same thing it's just a little bit more elevated you've added a little bit of line work and it looks pretty cute you know the little beads design yeah I think that again that's one that could work really nicely with certain types of themes as well I recently saw I think it's Boudreaux for Stars over on Instagram was doing a friendship bracelets theme so this type of lettering style would be really cute to add for like headers on those kind of layouts where you don't have to do anything too crazy too hard but it's just it's just something kind of nice Alrighty. so other possibilities if you wanted to do an all caps kind of route but you didn't want to have like the color in the middle you could do an outlined all caps if you want I do find this one to be a little bit more tricky uh, it does take a little bit more practice so I would encourage using a pencil first um, especially for certain types of letters anything that curves is always a hard time for me but I'm gonna freehand it because I like to challenge myself it seems so for this one we would just do I'm gonna try and do it on just two lines so we'll do a little kind of I don't know boxy parentheses <laughs> And then we're going to go up to here, go across. Like we said before, it's all right if your letter forms aren't beautiful and perfect. Like if it ties in with your theme especially, uh, it, it can sometimes pay to not be. Um, the, the word header has no meaning now, I write. It's just completely not actually a thing anymore. So if your lettering doesn't look perfect, it's okay. And I am t saying this over and over again, mainly for myself, but if it helps you too, then haha -ha, double win, right? I actually have used this lettering style before in June of 2019, I think. I think it's in this journal. Let's see, because this one was just sitting on the desk because I was using it the other day. See? There you go. S. Awful. <laughs> like, I'm not good at S's. Um, but also, like, with the curves of D. But, like, this one is just a simple all caps with a drop shadow behind it. Um, if you're not good at drop shadows, I find the easiest way to figure out where they go is literally looking up a reference online. Uh, funnily enough, the internet is a wonderful place full of many great things, and drop shadow references are one of them. Um, so that could either be going and looking at like a drop shadow font generator, like just type it into Google kind of a thing, or you could find like drop shadow lettering reference. Um, all of those work. Just make sure that when you're looking for your generator, you do include the word like lettering or font or something like that in there. Otherwise it'll give you drop shadows for just like anything. And we specifically want it for text. Um, Cause yeah, I find that I have a distinct preference when it comes to which direction I like my drop shadows to be in. I always like to go lower and to the right. That's my kind of preferred space. Uh, but if you want them in different directions and such, depending on what you're working on, it can be useful to have references. So this one isn't turning out as bad as I thought it was going to. So we can at least give me a small round of applause for that. Yay. Let's see. The real test is going to be the R, though, because of that curve. <laughs> so if we're going to go put that one in, 
I will usually just do the straight edge first here because it kind of caps off where it's supposed to be and then go on the outside of the curve first and then put that stick in. I'm trying to make it so that it looks kind of consistent. The internal part of the R is where I have probably the most struggles to make it look like it's supposed to be where it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's close enough. As said, start with pencil. It'll just make it easier. If this style is a little bit too challenging for you, the easiest way probably is just to go in with your colored marker first and then outline it. That is going to be my, my biggest kind of preference when it comes to that. So after this one, what else could we do? <laughs> This is your first live. That's exciting. Thank you for being here. I did for sunshine theme. Yeah, that'd be cute. Move the drop shadow from sunrise to sunset. Oh, that'd be really sweet. I like that. This is very like, I don't know, what's the word? <sighs> Intellectual type theme. So let's see. We could also do just little boxes if you wanted to. Um, that would be a nice way to do it. I'm going to do the little boxes in yellow. So I'm going to put that here. H. B, A, D, E, R. And this one could effectively be treated the same way as the little string of beads was. Like you can join them up if you want to. You can just leave them as the little blocks of color. I'm just going to color mine in. Uh, this would be really good for if you're doing some kind of like game board theme or like Scrabble or anything like that. If you want to make them into little Scrabble tiles. Uh, you could even put like the little scores on the Scrabble tiles would be also quite cute. Um, we're just going to leave them as they are. I'm actually going to let them dry before I go and put any lettering over the top. If we're thinking about just general lettering styles that you can do that are like kind of fun and easy, one of my go-tos is uh, effectively just like an all caps serif. So serifs are those little kind of flicks that you get on the end of letter forms, especially from like, I don't know, books and stuff like this especially old books we're thinking like times new roman all right so if we do we're gonna put that one here we'll just do it small so you're effectively just writing your regular all caps and then we're going to embellish the all caps so h e a d e r and i've kept them a little bit further away from each other and we'll see in a while in, in a second why that is so for the serifs again this is a great opportunity to just look up a font that has serifs like times new roman or garmond or like whatever and just type out whatever you want your title to be and add the serifs in based on what it has there but effectively anywhere a line ends you put a little line there and the little line is going to be perpendicular not parallel so this is parallel this is perpendicular so if we think about the letter form h the h has like you know the vertical line going up each of the sides the little flick that we're going to put at the end of them is going to sit on top of it kind of like a t <gasps> like the team with a capital t oh my gosh Alrighty. so putting the little flicks on the top and the bottom so you can see that it just takes that letter form and makes it look a little bit special um for e we can do all of the ends here I have a tendency to, for E, pretty much only do the kind of up for the lower one and down for the top one, just because I prefer the way it looks. And I also extend the top and bottom lines over to the left. And this is why we left a little bit of a gap so that then we can put those in and the lettering doesn't look too squashed. All right, so we can do that for both of the E's, the little extender and the little flicks. As you do this more, you'll get more comfortable with like where you think they look right for you as well. Um, you know, we are different people. We have different preferences, so you don't have to put them where I put them. Uh, for D, we're going to extend it out to the left as well. Those are the only kind of like line endings we really have. For A, we're going to put it at the bottom. And some people also like to put it at the top. Again, it's a personal preference there. And for R, it's going to be the bottom. Extend from the top to that left hand side and also putting it at the bottom here. So this style of lettering is one that I will often use for subheadings. Um, you know, it's it's a little bit more decorative than just your everyday all caps font, but it is not too hard. You're gonna do all your bujo month and windings, yeah. 
<laughs> that is one way to surefire make sure that nobody else can understand what you're doing. Also, we've been here for a little bit, so Tink, it's time for a drink break. I'm drinking water today. Sacrilege. Mm -mm. I just wanted to see if I could finish this bottle before, I don't know, midday. We'll see how it goes. So, other lettering styles. We never went back and finished these guys, so we're going to go put those in. I'm just going to do a little H, E, A, D, E, R. And it's all right. If they come outside of the box, that is totally fine. I mean, you could also do letter forms that were, like, way bigger than the box if you want to and just use the box for, like, a little bit of decoration. Um... I think that there's like a style of lettering that has, I don't know how I'm going to do this one, but I'll try and show you what I mean. It effectively has like a little colored dot in the middle of the letter. So if we do like H, no, actually, oh, I don't want to pencil it out. We're, we're just going to do the letters individually. So H would be here. And then you do E in pretty much the same way. So dot in the middle. And then for the A, I'd probably be inclined to put it smack bang in the middle of the letter. A. And then D can be on the side of the D. And E we've already done, so that one's nice and easy. And then R will end up in the middle of the R as well. So this one isn't necessarily going to fit for everything, uh, obviously. <laughs> I mean, none of these are. That's kind of why we're going through so many different options. Um, and this one can take a little bit longer because you have to kind of like start and stop and whatever else. But it's just another way to make it a little bit more fun. There we go. And from here, you could also put like a, I don't know, ring around each of those uh, dots if you wanted to to kind of make it look like it's kind of built into the letter form a little bit so we could leave it like this or you can go through and like add a circle around it or I think there's a lettering style that has it as a diamond um, which looks pretty cute as well uh, just depends on what you prefer drawing but it kind of looks a little bit in line with, like, the Pokemon unknown type font. A little bit. Use a red dot for Christmas. Looks like Rudolph. That would be so cute. <laughs> so, let's see. We can also do things like... Uh, you guys may have seen the style where people put down washi tape and then they write over the top of the washi tape. So, if we get out a piece that is kind of thin because... I prefer it to be a little bit thinner and we're not going to use this washi tape to actually like decorate the page we're going to use it to protect the page and then right over the top of it so we're going to put this here ish here ish looks good because we are going to write over the top of this using the Tombow all right and what this will do is it'll protect the page from laying down the color um, so we want to make sure that our letter form sticks both above and below where we end up putting it I'm going to use the brush end here because I can. So H can go here. Like you can put the bar in, but it's going to get taken away by the tape. H, E, A, D, E. And then R I have not left enough tape for, so this is going to be fun. <laughs> You just need to make sure that you stop it at the right place effectively. You don't have to use the tape. The tape is just there to make it a little bit easier for yourself so that you can write fairly naturally. And then once we take this part away, you can go and put a box in if you want to. You could, you know, rule a box around here and then write something in there. Um, it also doesn't have to be the same text either. Like this could be like, I don't know, July habit tracker or something like that um, doesn't have to be the same thing and I'm just going to write in it with the word header um, we're effectively going to do a similar thing to what we did up here so that'll be H E A 
D E R. Cute. Right. But this one's kind of nice because you can combine different styles um, if you wanted to do a different type of lettering. Also, you can combine different words, which is kind of nice. Because the nice part is that even though we've lost the middle of the word, we kind of know that that says header even without having the other one there. Like, that still looks like header. It also is kind of given away by the fact that everything on this page says header, but it's fine. So that is something that you can do for that, which is kind of cute. Style 11 is perfect for a C theme. I assume this one is style 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Haha, I can count. So that could be a really fun th C theme. Um, the lettering style that I used for my C theme is one that I go back to time and time again. It's this guy here. We do have a full video of kind of like how you letter out each of the letters in the alphabet for that lettering style on the channel. Um, you can also see like here's a bunch of different ways that you can do lettering. Um, so you can do like a photography thing. You can do the kind of like chunky whatever this kind of thing is. We're going to put that one in. Why not? So this one that we're about to do, this kind of chunky style, is very much based on the idea of each of the thickened sections takes up a full width of a dot grid box. I'm going to put it, if I put it here, is that going to be too big? H, E, A, it probably will be. I'm going to, I'm going to put it just a line down. Okay, so we start by drawing a box. And the box is two segments down, one segment across, right? Or effectively like one centimeter by half a centimeter. Um, this is going to be the side of the H, right? So to do the rest of the H, you just bring it out like that. This box is a space of infinite possibility, right? We can color it in, we could put in a pattern, you could fill it in with washi tape if you want to and like trim around the outside. That's That, that could be something kind of fun. And we're effectively going to do the same thing for every single one of our letters. So E, again, it's going to be that side part there. I'm going to do the same thing I did before and put it like a half dark red box away. So E can go to here. When it comes to the A, this is where I would like to like curve it. I don't want to do the A where like one of the lines is kind of going off to the side. I'm going to do it so that then the middle is here and the thickened part is everything on the left. So it's going to be a little bit hard to explain, but hopefully in showing you it'll kind of make sense. This lower half of the thickened section is going to be kind of straight down like that and then the top side is going to be curved so i'll put the straight part over here kind of looks like japanese character for mountain at the moment <laughs> and then we're going to curve the top over from one side to the other there we go not too bad right and add in that bar so it's header h-e-a for d we're going to put that here that one's effectively fairly simple just the box and then curving around to the right place to make it look like it is the same size e as we did before the box and the lines that come out of it nice and easy and this is why i needed to put it a line down because i didn't want it to interact with this one <laughs> and r is fairly simple too so for this one you're effectively just taking one of the lines in the letter and replacing it with a nice chonky section. And then inside that chonky section, you can do like different styles of patterns or colors or whatever else. I'm going to do a pattern and I'm going to use my dot marker to do it. So we could do like a dotted pattern. So just little dots in it, which is kind of cute. I'm trying to make sure that we don't you know, get that dot on the side of the letter form because this pen is very much not waterproof so it will be picked up by my dot marker you could do some just line work so doing lines in one direction and then in another direction and then another direction if you wanted to so something like that that looks kind of cute uh, we could just do regular vertical stripes or you could turn it into a checkerboard type thing, so vertical stripes and horizontal stripes to make a kind of grid crosshatch kind of looking thing. Uh, we could do it in terms of like a spiral. So just spiral out from the center with that. Here we go. 
That looks pretty cute. Or you could just color the whole thing in. That also works, I suppose. So we'll do that one for the R. Again, being careful not to touch the sides because we don't want to make a mess. I probably wouldn't do a different uh, type of pattern for every single letter. It might look a little bit busy. Yeah, I would probably go with like the same style each time, but yeah, it's up to you. It's up to whatever you want to do. Let's have a look at some banners because banners are a pretty much stock standard way to do letters, lettering styles uh, that, you know, it's just, it's again, just a little bit elevated. The easiest type of banner all right, it starts with a box, okay? <laughs> so for this one, you effectively just want a box that is big enough to hold whatever it is that you're going to write in that. If we are writing the word header, I will just write the word header out first because that'll make it a little bit easier. I'm going to write it here. And I'm going to do just H-E-A-D-E-R. Okay. So let's just pretend that this is the header, okay? We want a box that is going to uh, capture the entire of the header, and I'm going to make that one centimeter down and however many centimeters I need across. Depends on what you're writing in it. Depends on if you want this to fit the entire span of the page. Um, I used to do... I don't know if I have any immediately available right now. I probably have one somewhere. Um, but I used to do a lot of these type ones where I just do it the full span of the page and then just write in whatever it is that I needed to write, you know, full span of the page. But we're effectively going to do one of these. So once you've got your spacing wherever you want it, like if you want the whole span or if you just want it stuck to this lettering, we're effectively just going to need to put a box in. Okay, so box is for me going to go here. That looks pretty cute. And that's just going to be the top part of our banner. You can rule this if you want. I used to rule them all the time because I just preferred it when it looked like that. And then when we come to doing the little tail kind of parts that stick out from the kind of underside of the banner, then we just need to draw some horizontal lines that come out either side of this box. Trying to make sure that they are kept at roughly the same level. This is where your dot grid can be really helpful. So I'm going to do my line that comes out of this box at effectively the middle point, so half a centimeter down. And I'm going to put those so that they come out effectively the same amount of distance out because I like the consistency of that, okay? So, so far effectively we just have a box with a line going through it, also a valid type of header if you wanted to leave it at this point, but we want to turn it into a banner. So, from here, now what we're going to want to do is do another set of horizontal lines underneath these ones, and we want them to be an equal distance down that this side distance is, okay? So you don't need a ruler because we're using the dot grid, but just for the sake of it, this is a centimeter on the side. So this header box here has a centimeter on the side. I'm going to want to put my next horizontal line a centimeter down from the horizontal line that I've just done, okay? Again, if you line this up with the dot grid, it just makes it so much easier. <laughs> so we've got that one here, and we're going to do the same over here. So that'll be there, okay? Now, when we put these horizontal lines in, we don't want them to just come to the edge of the box. We actually want them to extend in further, and we again want them to extend in the same amount as each other. It doesn't really matter how much you go in, but I find a pretty good rule of thumb is to go in from the sides of the box, so in towards the middle, half the distance of this length. That is what I usually find to be a fairly comfortable amount of space. So like we said, our distance that we have between this line and where the bottom one will be is one centimeter. So we're going to want to come in half a centimeter. So if that is where the side of the box is, we're going to want to come in half a centimeter from that. Again, we're using the dot grid, just makes things really, really easy. On this side, though, we're going to actually have to measure it because this one isn't aligned with the dot grid. So we want it to come in half a centimeter from there, making sure we line it up nicely, because this width on the side 
is a centimeter. You do not have to do it as precise as this. It does not have to be this anal, especially while you're practicing though, it can just be useful to have that as a kind of rough guideline. Okay. So now that we've got our guiding lines in, we're actually going to go and draw those horizontal lines. So the bottom one across here and the bottom one across here. Again, you can use a ruler if you want to. I am not because I don't feel like it. This is looking good so far. Okay, from here, how do we actually make this look like a folded piece of ribbon? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do some vertical lines on the innermost points of these lower lines. They're going to come up and touch the box. Okay, so that one there, that one there. Looks pretty cute. Okay, so we've got the bottom part of the ribbon here, the top part of that lower piece of ribbon. Now we need to put in what is going to look like the fold. And the fold is just a little triangular section that connects the box we started with with the lower part of the ribbon. Okay? And this is where people can start to stuff things up because they put the triangle in the wrong place and then you're like, oh my god, I ruined everything. We don't want that for you. Okay? You can do this. I believe in you. We're going to start here on the right because it's here. We're going to go from this corner that we just drew in of this lower part of the ribbon up to the corner of the box. Okay, so I just put that line in there. And now we have a fold. Oh, love that. Okay, same thing on the other side. We're going to go from the corner that we've got down here up to the corner of the box. Let's put that in like this. So, folded ribbon. Gorgeous. Love it. Beautiful. Okay. From here, it's really just about detail work. And what kind of detail work you want to put in is completely up to you. I find that I typically like to put in some line work on those little triangles, just like some kind of like shading lines or something like that to make them look a little bit cute. Going in alternating directions like that. And you also want to cap off your ribbon. I usually cap the ribbon off with a little kind of triangular cutout section like this, but you can just leave it straight if you want to. I just prefer it having that little triangle. See, that wasn't so bad. All right. When you do this uh, repeatedly, if you do quite a lot of them, you get very quick and very kind of like, I don't know, it's just a lot easier. Like, I mean, everything's easy with practice, Jess. Yes, it is. But sometimes we need to remind ourselves of that. Also, we should remind ourselves that we need to have a drink break. So, tink. Hopefully this has been helpful so far. If you are finding it useful, if you're finding you're getting yourself some good ideas, or if you're just like hanging out with us, make sure to give the video a like. It's always appreciated. <laughs> Mm -mm. I'm coming to the end of my bottle of water, which is, you know, good for me. And hopefully you're staying hydrated too. Make sure to take care of yourself. Alrighty. So that is one possible header option. You can, of course, do headers that are, uh, you know, kind of curly, curved kind of thing. You can do ones that are only folded on one side. So if you wanted to do one that was folded on one side, we'll just look at that one kind of quickly. So we're going to go, we're going to put that one here. All right, you can see that this one took up three lines of space. So we're going to do the same here, three lines of space. Go over by however much you want. Do the little triangular section. I'm just showing you like a different way or a different order to draw this effectively. So doing that from there to there and then up to the corner. So we're effectively doing this little ziggy bit. And then we're going to go across. I'm going to turn my journal because it's just going to be easier. We doesn't need to take up the full length, but I thought it should. Okay. So that gives us the kind of bottom section here going across, zig up and across. So now from here, we just need to go and put in a couple more lines to make it actually look like it's part of a banner. So one of those is going to be the vertical line that makes the little triangle, right? That shows the fold. One of them is going to be the vertical line here, which shows the edge of the banner. And then we can go and add in the other parts that actually make it look eh, like a banner. Whee. And like we said, I like to have little kind of triangular cutoffs of the ribbon or the little I know, floating stuff that we've got going on here. I think that that looks kind of cute. All right. So if you are just starting out with banners, if you're not super, super comfortable with them, then I would probably recommend starting with pencil first, especially for this section here, because that is the part where the majority of people will make a stuff up if they're going to stuff up, um, just making it so that it actually looks like it's folded or, you know, bent or whatnot. Uh, from here, you can color the ribbon in. You could de decorate it with washi tape if you want to. I'm just going to go and write the word header in here because otherwise it doesn't fit the page. 
we can't have a header that doesn't say header, otherwise how will we know what it is? Header exclamation point. So cute, right? You can also use these ones for like days of the week and stuff as well, which can be really, really fun. Um, so you just make this lower piece of ribbon a little bit longer so that you could put like a number in for the day of the week and then maybe write the, you know, what day it actually is. So it could be like seven, Monday or like whatever. I think it's the eighth, isn't it? Eight, Monday. <laughs> so that could, that could work too and be quite cute. Um, other ways that we can do ribbons, you can do things like bunting headers. That can be kind of fun as well. So a bunting header is effectively just like a variation of one of these two guys. It's just that instead of connecting the line through the middle, you kind of make it go through the top, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to just do this one here and we're just going to draw some boxes, but leave the bottom off because we want them to be triangularly cut out triangularly. I don't think that's the right way to say it, but it's fine. H-E-A-D-E-R. Looks pretty cute. And then we're going to go do the little triangle cutout of the bottom. Looking very sweet. All right. Doesn't need to be big. Doesn't need to be equal the whole way across. All right. This is your beautiful hand-drawn journal. It's allowed to have some character. Um, and you can go and color those in if you want to. I'm, I'm going to. I think it'll look nicer colored in. Um, rather than just outlined, because then I can go and outline them in black, and then they will pop more. So you just do one little one little flag per letter, um, and if you want to do multiple letters, then I would probably, multiple letters, come on, if you want to do multiple words, then I would probably leave a larger space between them, so it's like, you know, this is all one word, so I've left that kind of consistent smaller gap between them if I was going to do multiple words so like I don't know habit tracker or something like that I'd probably use a slightly larger space between them uh to do the kind of actual <laughs> string that the bunting is supposedly hanging on I would try to put the string or where the string kind of looking piece is oh so slightly lower than the top of the boxes here all right a lot of people would see this and they would have a tendency to just grab their ruler and then just rule the whole way through which you can do like it's not wrong it's just that I find it looks a little bit better if you have just a little bit of overhang from those bunting pieces to actually make it look like they're hanging off the string rather than just kind of I don't know part of the string. I, I feel like I'm explaining this poorly. Please let me know if you understand what I mean. <laughs> like, yeah, so just doing the, the, the horizontal line for the string slightly lower than where the top of the bunting is because it just looks a little bit better in my opinion. All right, and it's only a small change. Like if you don't want to take the time to do that, that is totally fine. It's your prerogative. If you don't mind how it looks, it is all good. All right, we want you to love your journal. It is all good if you love it that way. I personally love it more if I spend the little bit of extra time and just do that string line a little lower. So we'll put these guys in. And then when it comes to doing the string line, we're just going to do it ever so slightly lower than where the top of those bunting pieces are. And again, you could use a ruler here. You could give it a slight curve if you want to, to make it look like it's kind of hanging, hanging. But you see how it kind of looks like it sits on top of it now? This also could be used if you don't want to make it kind of like bunting-esque. You could use it like it was like a bookmark kind of a thing, like a little like fabric bookmark that's like tucked over the top of a page or something like that. That's also kind of cute. So we'll just write H, E, A, B, E, R. Gorgeous. I love it. Umagui. So other types of headers we can do. Uh, one of my favorite types of headers, like in, in the, the way back whens, the old days, not that old, um, was doing something kind of like this. So you do a scribble of color. This is for very short headers. This is for like effectively day numbers or first initials or something. You do a scribble of color so that it kind of sits over where you would have a box. And then you draw the corners of the box behind the scribble. Um, one of the ways that you can do this to make it a little easier for yourself is use a pencil to kind of sketch out where that box is. But like we said before, when you then go and erase it, there may be a little bit of a pencil left over. So do some practice for yourself. You don't have to do it. Um, 
just you know with with the pencil at all. So I'm going to use a one centimeter by one centimeter box here, um, and I'm going to put a scribble of color so that it doesn't perfectly cover over that centimeter. Hopefully you can kind of see what I mean there. Let me just bring you guys up a little bit closer. It's a point. So you see how this guy is my centimeter? So that corner of the centimeter is poking out. That corner is poking out. That one is barely poking out. And then this guy here is kind of poking out. It means that then when I go and put the black line work around the outside, I'll actually like be able to see it. It kind of looks like the little colored swatch is sitting over the top. Okay. So when you do this one, uh, it, it's very much just about trying to make sure that you're not going over the uh, colored section. Otherwise, then the colored section doesn't really look like it's sitting over the top. It just looks like it's being kind of cut into. We don't really want it to look like that. Um, and depending on where you've drawn your scribble, then where you put your line work will be a little bit different, but this can be one way to do it. We're going to do this for uh, the full word, because why not? You could actually do the scribble the whole way across. You do not have to do it in individual letters either, um, but I'm just going to do them as if they were individual letters. H, E, A, B, E, uh. And you don't have to have like super consistent scribbles or anything like that, but it's just it's just a little bit of fun. Um, this is one where you could get your ruler out and just you know rule across and do them all at once. I'm just going to do it with my with my free handing of my pen. Um, but I do find that the straighter that you can make those box lines that are going you know in with the black pen, the better it will tend to look. Um, but like we said, it's all good if it looks a little hand drawn because it, it is hand drawn. Oh my gosh. Who would have thunk it? Cute. As you do, like with anything, as you do more of this, you'll get kind of comfortable with where you like to put the color in the, the little kind of box section. Oh yeah. If you use a color gradient, that would look really cute. I think that, that would look really sweet. Use like a slightly different color pen for each of them or you can alternate colors or whatever else, you know. Like we said before, if yellow isn't your color, you do not have to use yellow for these. Um, and they will look different, notably, uh, when you do different colors. Mainly because, funnily enough, the color is different, but also because of the level of contrast that you've got. So I specifically picked yellow here because I wanted it to be very kind of bright, poppy, punchy compared to the black. Um... For black pens, I'm using the Papermate Flare and the Papermate Ink Joy today. Uh, preferred writing pen, and the other one has a really good quality of black. I like the way that it kind of like looks kind of punchy. So from here, whichever lettering style you want to use, completely up to you. We're just going to go with a simple all caps, and we're going to make them quite small. H E A D E uh, but you can play around with the different sizes of lettering and whatnot, depending on what you like. So another possible style could be, if we're going to go with something kind of cute and simple, you could do just a different style of lettering again um, and do it more like a, like a kind of stitched lettering almost. So effectively, rather than writing out like, you know, H with a full kind of sweep through, you just take it and you kind of take your pa um, pen off the page repeatedly. So it's just got little lines making up the letter. It just looks like a little stitched moment. H, E, should have left myself more space here. A, D, E. To make this one look as best as possible, try and make it so that the line work that you're doing actually goes in the direction that the letter like would be written. Um, for instance, on the A here, I've kind of gone a little bit off kilter, like those lines aren't specifically in line with where the A actually would be. Um, it does end up looking a little bit messy because of that which again, messy is fine, but if you want it to look a little bit more precise, just take your time, make sure that your lines are a 
consistent distance from each other. Your lines are a consistent distance in themselves and they actually align well with where they're supposed to be. Alrighty. Uh, another possibility. So we could do something kind of similar to this one, but instead of putting the lettering over the top, we can kind of do it underneath, which would be kind of cute. Uh, so we're going to do a stripe of color. Again, we're going to do it roughly the same length because that seemed to work. Um, so the stripe of color goes here. This is another one where you could use washi tape to protect your page if you wanted to, um, which you have to find a washi tape that's kind of like the right size, but I'm just going to go in with my pen. Um, and then instead of cutting through the letter form like we did here, you just tuck it behind kind of more like we had here. So H E It's also hard to write at this end of the journal, so apologize for cattywampusness. D E R And I've left a little bit of a tail here, so I'm going to put an exclamation point. It's a great way to uh, fix up any of your sizing issues uh things like exclamation points or hearts i do that a lot um or a star or something like that just like a symbol so that you don't really change the word you're just kind of filling in space uh from here you could again write in a different header if you wanted to so like you know like we said before it could be like the month's name and then habit tracker or something like that or it could just be like habit tracker that could also work uh, I'm again just going to write in the word header just doing it very small so that it sits inside that little yellow bar that we have header exclamation point <laughs> so cute so another possibility um, you could also just leave it open and just have the yellow stripe there you don't have to write anything over it either another option I am a fan of a box with a drop shadow so we're going to do one of those um, like I said before, if you want to do drop shadows, but you're not super familiar with them, you're kind of find them a little bit difficult, then literally just going and finding like drop shadow generator online can be a really good way to figure it out. When it comes to a simple box though, I find that simple boxes are the easiest to do a drop shadow for. And like we said before, I have a preference in terms of which direction my, uh, drop shadow tens in. I'm just going to write the word header out first so that I can make my box the right size. Uh, for this one, I'm going to use, I'm going to use the yellow end of this. Um, we're just going to do a kind of serif all caps, H E A. D uh, you can use whatever lettering style you want in this one, which is nice. We love things that are versatile. Right. Now to actually do the box with the drop shadow. First of all, funnily enough, might come as a surprise, we're going to draw a box. Oh my gosh. So remembering to rotate your journal so that it's comfortable. You can use a ruler if you want. I am just being lazy. So now is the box is in. I typically like to have it so that my drop shadow goes down and to the right, okay? So we effectively need to think about this right-hand side, well, I mean, I guess lower right-hand side in particular, and effectively just redrawing exactly the same thing, but lower and to the right. Now, it can be useful if you want to go in here with a pencil and literally sketch the exact same thing out again and just make it lower and to a certain side. I'm not going to do that because... It, it, it means I'd have to go and erase over the yellow line work and that would be a little bit difficult. But if we think about it in terms of just the corners that we have, that can be a pretty good way to start. So if we took this corner here and we made it lower and to the right, it would end up effectively here, okay? And we want to do a consistent thing on every other corner. Like if this corner here ended up lower and to the right, it'd be in the middle of my header, so I'm not actually going to say it. This guy here, if we go lower and to the right, it'll end up here. And this corner here, if we go lower and to the right, it'll end up here. Okay. And because this is just a straight edged box, it gives me some like effectively like a connect the dots picture. Love connect the dots. Right. So we're going to go down from that one, connect to that dot. 
and then from this side over, but like we said, I don't like drawing horizontal lines, so we'll turn it into a vertical line, and just go all the way over. Wee! Bonk! All right, not looking too bad. Uh, at the moment, it doesn't actually look like a drop shadow, though. It just looks like an additional line. To turn it into that drop shadow, we do need to connect it to the last box. So just drawing across here and up from there. From here, you can color that in in black or in gray or, like, you know, just leave it open if you want to. I often like to do uh, line work in mine to make it look a little bit less a little bit less punchy so I'm going to tilt this slightly and just do some diagonal lines make it look kind of cute and in terms of the actual like style of this one it is fairly simple like it is just a box that has uh, a you know a kind of decorative drop shadow but the actual lettering style that we've used within it like you can do anything there it can be regular all caps it could be cursive it could be whatever you want um i think this looks pretty good though all righty so we need another one because we have some space to fill down the bottom here we are going to do a hmm if there's anything that you think we're missing also, you let me know because, you know, you, you guys are the masters of our destiny here and you guys are going to let me know <laughs> when there's something that we haven't uh, addressed, something that feels like it should be here. I'm going to go with a kind of what I'm going to call a, like, I don't even know how to describe it. We're just going to kind of do it. All right. So this one is a kind of like a photography like we're thickening down strokes and stuff kind of similar to what we've done here we're just doing it in a way that's a lot more chill all right we're not going to do it so that it's quite as large as, as that one i'm going to use the paper mate flare here this one again it can be useful to go and find like a, an online lettering reference um to make sure that you've got all of the letters in the way that you want um but we're going to kind of make a thicker section for this side so H here, kind of like we've got here. It's just that we've made it like a lot thinner compared to the other one. And we're also combining this style, making it a little narrower, with serifs, right? So H with the serifs, looking cute. E, we need that kind of boxed section. And then we can do the little serifs. E. For the A, I am going to do the A with the thickened section on the left-hand side again. It really depends on what you prefer. Like, it's all good if you would rather have it on the other side because you are doing your lettering and I am doing this. <laughs> H-E-A. D, that one is the side, so that one's nice and easy. And we're running out of space, so let's see. Can we get it in here? Probably not. It might just end up being heady. That's okay. E. I don't know if I even want to try put the R in, but why not? We'll just make it kind of awkwardly tucked into the side here. There we go. It just escapes off the side of the page. Ta-da! It's part of it. So from here, you can again fill that in with patterns, whatever else. I'm just going to go and put in some horizontal lines, some kind of little line work, make a little stripey ladder kind of moment. And that can just go all the way along, all of them. Not too shabby at all. So not all of these are going to work for everything, like we talked about before. Uh, some of them are a little bit more involved. Some of them <laughs> require a little bit more effort and time. Uh, really just depends on what it is you actually want to do. Uh, one other style, because we might as well do a couple more. We've got some space here. So I'm going to go with effectively this but we're going to think about it in terms of like vertical hanging so this was kind of like beads on a string we're going to think like lights on a wire okay the nice part about this one is that you can do them at kind of varying heights and stuff and that'll look kind of cute so we're going to go h e a d e r all right and from here we just need to put in some vertical lines as if they were like hanging off strings this one would be fun for like if you were doing a well, light theme, 
Uh, also, if you were doing like a Christmas baubles type thing, um, you could actually like kind of fully encompass them and then put like a little, uh, what's the word? A little kind of ornament hanging attachment thing. You could put that onto it if you want to. H E A D E R. Which looks kind of cute. Um, I often find that randomizing things is not something that I'm super good at. Uh, we could. I'm thinking about like how we can use the dot marker in particular because I feel like it hasn't gotten like as much play as it could. You could do it so that then between each of your letters you have a dot. So if we do H E A D whoop needed space there E and R and then you just put like a little dot in between each of them. For this one I'm not going to press down too hard. Uh, I'm not going to make like a really really big dot. But that'd be kind of cute. Right. So that's a possibility as well. What else could we do? Hmm. I think one that would be also kind of fun to do uh, based on the idea of like having a box is having a box that has like a little bit of tape over the corner which you could use actual tape if you wanted to I would be more inclined to draw it uh, if I wanted to do this style so for that one we'd probably start with a pencil outline of where we want the box to go just so that you can see where your tape needs to go I'm gonna put the box here okay. so if this is the box that we've got drawn in we need to kind of think about uh putting a little another little rectangle over the corners such that the corner still actually sticks out okay so i'm going to put a little rectangle here on on a side you know on, on a lean and a little rectangle here on on a side on a lean so that the edges of the box are underneath the new rectangle but the corner sticks out okay so I'm going to go draw the corner in to kind of confirm the fact that it's, its location is here. Okay, the corners are fine, right? When we go and put the little pieces of tape over the top of them, though, we want that tape to extend past the edges of the box. It kind of does look a little bit like the Friends logo, doesn't it? I think if you actually used, like, the Friends kind of lettering style as well and you could do, like, more of a Friends theme, that would be quite cute. So from here, we're going to put your journal in a direction that you can actually work in draw in the little pieces of tape, making sure that they extend past where the edges of the box are. Otherwise, it'll end up looking a little weird. You can either just cap them off as regular, like straight line, or you can do something a little bit kind of jagged to make it look like the tape is torn. I am going to go with jagged. All right, that looks kind of cute. So those are the tape corners. Now it's just about drawing in the rest of the box. Nice and easy. Love easy. And we would usually tilt our journal, but we're being fearless and attempting to draw horizontal lines. Oh, there we go. That one went a little Gosh. over. Well, that's all right. It's looking pretty cute. Yay! Make sure that you give your pen adequate time to dry before you try and erase things. Otherwise, smudging happens. And that's not the business. So other possibilities that we could do. A really nice way to make headers, which we're not really going to do here because it, it requires a few more supplies um it's actually just using kind of decorative paper and writing with your regular style of writing on top of the decorative paper right it elevates it instantly because it just like sets it apart from whatever else you've put on your page uh but you didn't really have to do anything all that special about it which is great um Let's see, another way that we could do while this is drying uh, is if you take your regular writing, we're just going to do a regular cursive because we can. So H E A D E R. And then you just outline it using a colored pen of some description. I'm going to use the uh, bullet end of the dot marker. So when you're doing the outlining, do try and make it so that it's consistent the whole way around. But like we said, it's okay if it looks hand-drawn because it is hand-drawn. That can be a fun way. It kind of makes it look like a kiss cut sticker almost. Uh, or like the kiss cut lines that you would have when you're trying to make stickers. She says having never made stickers before, so like don't trust her, but this is what I expect it would look like if I were to make stickers. <laughs> I 
we go. The ah, my pen got away on me. But you hopefully see see the general uh, idea we're going with. Vertical ones can be fun. Yeah, indenting the section for a header. Nice. Yep. Let's see. This is like a button here that hovers over the top of what people have written. So it's, it's very frustrating because I can't quite read things. Ugh, the struggle is real. Alrighty, we have hopefully given it adequate time, she says, smudging her ink. Always give it more time than you think. All right. It's all right if it smudges. We can fix that. We can we can fix it in post. We've got a white gel pen or something like that. So that would be kind of cute. We can also just go and write the word header on here. H-E-A-D-E-R. And if you have some extra space, put in an exclamation point. Boom. Done. Ha ha. Spacing. Who needs it? So what else could we do? So vertical ones can be fun. They can be. Let's go and try a vertical header. If you wanted to do something very, very simple, uh, that could just be like H-E-A-D-E-R. So it's just a stripe. This would be quite cute, I think, for like daily logging almost. So you're like, right, the, the number and then like Monday or like whatever. That'd be quite cute. Uh, if we just keep it super simple stuff. A D E R. You can also do header banners, kind of like uh, like a hanging banner that's longer. So if we do with this guy here, we're going to go just a little bit further than you think you need because we're going to put that little tail into it and we're just making effectively a box, beautiful box. Love that for us. And then inside of this box, we can write in our header and I'm going to use a kind of Slightly stretched looking, <laughs> slightly stretched, very stretched looking all caps. So H E A D E R. R is going to be the hardest one. There we go. R. <laughs> very stretchy header you do not have to have it as stretched as i have i'm just trying to do some different lettering styles so that we don't have you know exactly the same thing in all of the places which you know is fine um what else could we go with we could do if you wanted to do something quite cutesy that's not really too hard you could do um a kind of like how am I going to do this? Let's see. I'm going to do this in pencil first because I feel like I'm going to get the uh, spacing of this wrong if I try to do it just freehanded. But we're effectively doing like a slight curve over here and then going in the same kind of sizing but the other direction from the other side. Okay. So this kind of like... <laughs> it's almost like you're trying to apply winged eyeliner, which I can't do, so good job on me for trying new things, but um, you're effectively using this as kind of like a little um, underline for the page, or for the header, I suppose. So it's just kind of curving in. It looks like these two little branches. And then once we put those in using black, because uh, that's effectively going to be like a branch, you can then go and add some uh, leaves to it, either using the black pen as well if you want to, or we can use that press down Tombow trick that we used at the start. So effectively bringing the tip towards the line you've already done and then just pressing it down to make what effectively looks like a little leaf. There we go. See, looks like little leaves, kind of cute. Doesn't need to be anything majorly hard or anything majorly huge. If you need to rotate your journal, make sure that you rotate your journal so that you can get them sitting in a way that you know, fits where you want them to go. Mine look a little bit strange, but that's okay because this is just an example. But you could do something kind of cute like that and then just write it with regular lettering over the top, which would be kind of sweet. So we can put that in here too. H E A D E R gorge love it all right another one another one so another one that we could possibly do could be something like uh ones that have kind of like a slice through them it is still just like regular lettering so we're just gonna do a 
what's the what's the way of wording this? Okay, we're gonna do a line the E R and then a little more. So we've got a line already, and we're going to put the H one section in from it. So H E A D E R. And then from here, we're effectively going to build out like a little arrow. Arrows used to be huge in the community. We would do so many arrows and it is all Boho Berry's fault. Um, <laughs> at least I think so. I think she was the one that most of us saw them from. And we're effectively going to make a little arrow that goes through the letter here. So do some little lines out the side, lines out the back. You can also go and actually like put black over the top of this if you want to. Um, just don't put it through the entire word. So I would probably put the uh, lines out the side, lines out the side, up to about here. And then from the other side, kind of similar like that. That looks pretty cute. So you can do like a little kind of arrow moment. Did so many arrows in my journal when I first started. They made for very fun headers. Let's see, what else could we do? Um, if you wanted to do something that was kind of like, let's see. Um, we haven't had a drink in a while and I need one. Tink. Make sure that you're hydrated. Hydration is important. Mm -mm. We don't have a lot that would fit in a smaller, smaller space. And by smaller space, I mean more like a horizontal smaller space. So that would be something that is probably good to do. Oftentimes, if I want something to fit in a smaller horizontal space, it's usually just like a day of the week. So I would just abridge it to make it like M-O-N instead of Monday or something like that. Um, but it might be nice to have a couple like that. So... A nice easy one would just be doing a little kind of box of colour where the box outlines kind of cross over the top of each other. So you end up with a little, little box like this and then just write inside of that. It doesn't have to be too fancy. I'm just going to do an H for header <laughs> uh, and we're just going to do that in H. Kind of a thing. And you could outline this one if you wanted to. It doesn't have to be outlined. I think if I were to outline it, I would outline all four of the lines. So where they kind of crossed over each other, you kind of treat it like it's tape. So you can see that where I've gone over it, it kind of darkens that line a little bit, which I think is kind of cute. I don't mind it at all. It's a really nice way to make a uh, plaid patterns not that we're going to be doing any plaid patterns in this one but it is something that you can use so considering i've now accidentally gone over that line we're just going to go over but not completely right so you kind of give it a little gap between where the line work already was there we go so it kind of looks like it's half see-through, kind of like tape, which is kind of cute. Right, nothing too major. Uh, another one, another one. Well, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm trying to fill the page here, but I think it would be kind of fun if we filled the page. So I think another lettering style in particular that I usually like to use uh, would be effectively just like a kind of, I'm, I'm going to call it a folography because that's effectively what it is. So I said we weren't going to go into too much detail with folography, but there are so many different header styles that you can do with it. So I feel like we have to at least feature it once. I am going to do my folography with this guy, mainly so that then I can color, oh, not color it in. Well, yes, color it in, but go around the outside with an outline because I think that that looks really cute. All right. So for this one, you just do effectively your regular uh, cursive. Just making your letters a little bit wider than you not maybe would usually. A, D, E, R. Right. And then we're going to go and add in those thickened downstrokes. I am going to use the brush end of this to just thicken them up a little bit. Uh, 
as said, we have a full separate video on photography, which is very worth checking out. Um, we go into a lot more detail about where you would thicken certain parts of the letters. And uh, we also talked briefly about how to join certain letters together and stuff like that. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Not right now, but in general. Um, but once we've done this thickened kind of section here, then you could just go and outline your letters using a thin black pen. Now, I would typically opt for a pen that is quite a bit thinner than my regular one. So I'm actually going to grab one of those out. I'm going to grab out the 03, no, yep, the 0.38 Muji pen. This is my preferred one for doing outlining when I'm doing photography style headers. Um, just because it is just a very nice uh, line thickness to do this. I also find that if you are trying to do your outlines um, with lettering, oftentimes your brain takes over thinking, oh, I know how this letter is supposed to look and it just kind of goes off on a tangent. We don't really want that. We want it to stick to where our color is and not go where our color is not or like cut into things, all right? So often what I would do is I would literally turn my notebook upside down because it looks less like a letter form now. So now I have to stick to where the color is slash isn't. Um, also, it makes it easier because I don't like having my hand hang off the side of my journal. And if this was the correct way around, it would do that. So we're going to do the outline of this. Take your time with it because it does take time. Um, and this is the style that I certainly would not be using for subtitles because it does take a long time. Often I will just use it for main headings. So if I want to use it like for the heading for the month or something like that, then this would be a very good one to use. Um, there's also a lot of different options in terms of how you decorate these as well. Like you can add gradients to them. Uh, we have a couple of different videos about how to decorate the inside of your letters using color and gradients and whatever else. Um, so kind of like turning your letter forms into different characters. I feel like I want to show it to you. So I'm going to go grab it in a second. Uh, will we outline the entire thing? I would say no, because it takes a long time. But at the same time, I'm a bit of a completionist, not when it comes to my project work, but at least when it comes to doing this. <laughs> so we're going to do a couple of these letters so you can kind of get an appreciation for how this would look. This would also be the kind of one where you would probably or rather possibly want to add a drop shadow. It would look very nice with a drop shadow. I just find drop shadows of letters very difficult. Um, and that is why finding drop shadow generators can be very helpful so that you don't have to try and do the guesswork of like, oh, does the drop shadow go here or here, especially on our curved letters. Drop shadows on boxes are a lot easier because they're just straight edged. So you can kind of see where we're headed with this, right? Um, it does look very nice. You can add that little white highlight. You can add your drop shadow. You can add your decorative pieces. I'm going to grab you an example, uh, which would be in this notebook. So um, those Christmas doodles. This page is ugh, not the right one, so we we're not going to look at it. So gradient lettering is, is one of the ways that you can kind of level this one up a little bit. If you were going to do gradient lettering for this style, what I would typically do is start with a really, really faint gray pen, um, something that's going to be really easy to lay other color over the top of, or you can start with pencil. Like if you kind of pencil the letters out first and then go and outline it, that can be a good way to do it. And then you can come in and color stuff in. So this is like, you know, separate color per each letter. This is, you know, blending them together kind of a thing and then adding a little bit of sparkles over the top. Um, this is a top and bottom one, uh, layer from lightest to darkest, that kind of stuff. That's kind of cute. And then another one that we have in here somewhere because this is an older journal, so I don't necessarily remember exactly where things are. Um, nope, not that page. That one stuck together. And this one was effectively how to, like, decorate it. See, like it says, from the Creative Lettering Ideas video published on my birthday in 2020. Um, so this is, like, how to kind of take 
just general lettering and make it a little bit more exciting. So you can do like, you know, Zentangles, animal print, gradients, gradients using pen, um, doing some kind of picture in the background. We had ones inspired by different characters. So you can probably guess who these characters are. <laughs> but there's another way that you can kind of just make it a little bit more special and really tie it into your theme, especially for the style that we're doing here, where you've just got a little bit more to play with effectively. Like you can do this kind of stuff anywhere you have a kind of larger section that you can color things in. It's just that it looks really, really cute with this style. Let's see. You grew up in the 80s. You did balloon letters. Yeah, balloon letters are a big one as well. They can be a lot of fun too. Um, I will also say that like in this video, I specifically just wanted to limit the number of supplies we were using. So we've just got effectively like a couple black pens and then the yellow markers or whatever else. Um, other ways that you can level up your lettering are just by using a range of different colors. Like you could use a different color per letter. Uh, you could use, like we showed before, the different styles in terms of, um, you know, coloring them in or doing different patterns or whatever else. I feel like I'm most of the way through the word now and I really should just finish this off. <laughs> so we're going to finish this off. But balloon letters are, are a lot of fun. I also find 3D letters are can be quite fun as well. Um, they, they are also one that is maybe a little bit trickier to do, but we can kind of have a look at that. Uh, also, different lettering style for each letter in the sense of kind of like the um, scrapbooky kind of ransom note looking uh, style, I suppose, which can work for a lot of different things as well. So I know that... Uh, Lorem, I think, in our community had done a spider punk theme, which was so flippin' cool. If you're not part of our Discord, you should join our Discord because you get to see the very, very interesting creations from other people. But they did one that had the kind of like ransom note, you know, different lettering style for each of the different pieces kind of thing, which was very, very awesome. So if you want to do something like that, then a good place to start is just drawing out some boxes um, on an angle. That'd be like box here, box here. And you make the boxes different sizes and different widths and all that. E, D. And R. And then within those boxes, you do a different lettering style for, for each of them. And then you can color in the backgrounds and stuff like that. So for instance, the H could be like a all caps kind of H and then maybe the E is like a, like a little kind of photography E type thing and then the A could possibly be like the serif one that we did before and if we do what I would usually do is I do like different colors for them so like some of them were on the dark background some of them on the light background so this one could be on the dark background mainly because it is easier to color around this than it would be to try and do the inverse of the e like you can use a white paint pen or whatever but i don't have a white paint pen um and i just me and paint pens are nemesis we're not friends <laughs> Um, I will say that if you are going to color in large sections of black, use an appropriate pen. This is not an appropriate pen for this. It takes too long, but I have made my choices and I'm going to live with them. So H-E-A for the D, we could do that again, like inverse. It doesn't have to be um, a different lettering style for every single letter, but I do find that I like to do a different lettering style within at least the same header itself so that can just be like playing around with capitals and lowercase letters that one works fine so again using an, an appropriate nib size for coloring in large sections of black as is my way this is another one that like because they are just boxes you could add a drop shadow to if you wanted to and it would be fairly easy uh, you could just do the drop shadow using a like brush marker if you wanted to, um, or you could, you know, do what we did before with the actual kind of like drawn in drop shadow. For the other E, we are going to go with, 
I'm trying not to do a lowercase e again because I literally just had one. So we're going to do an uppercase e, but we're going to make it all caps, but all caps done with black. Like I could leave it like this, but that looks messy. I was just using the blocks to kind of help me keep consistency in terms of my line widths where possible. And then for the R, we are going to do a, whew, a lowercase r, but a lowercase r done with the reverse. So this is going to be in white. Here we go. And I'm going to pick a different pen for it, and I'm going to use the correct size nib. I'm going to use a brush marker here instead. Um, you can possibly tell it might not shot well on camera that there is a definitely a different quality of black here uh, I find that the Tombow black doesn't really fulfill me in terms of my black pen needs it's not as black as I would like you also have blacks that have different colored undertones as well for, for your markers so like some of them have a very kind of like cool undertone like kind of bluish and some of them have a warmer undertone this one and the other one don't seem to match as well as they could but that can be a fun type of lettering style again it takes a little bit more time so you probably wouldn't use it for like every single um header or subheader that you're doing but it can be something um like we said before uh all caps kind of what do we say block letters that's the one block letters can be a lot of fun block letters take again more time and more practice okay so we're going to do some block letters across here and we're going to start with a pencil i personally find the block letters are easiest when you do them in all caps just because it's a lot easier to form an all cap so drawing in my header here we're going to use a dot grid to try and make them relatively consistent so there's h uh should i just do an h to kind of show you the the general gist because it does take a little bit longer um this is effectively like a cross between doing the kind of drop shadow type that we've done before and then just like general kind of 3Dism. So depending on which direction you want to go in, I'm going to try and do mine to the upper right. So effectively taking every corner and considering where would it be if it was in the upper right instead. Um, but rather than just drawing those out as guidelines, I'm actually going to draw a line in the direction of where it would end up. Okay, to kind of explain what I mean there. So previously, when we did this box down here, okay, so we drew out our box to start with. It was beautiful. It looked much better than this. We considered each of these corners on the box and where those corners would be placed if we moved them down and to the right. Okay, so this one ended up like here. This one ended up here. This one ended up here. And then this one ended up like in the middle of the box. So we didn't really focus on it very much. Okay. And we use that as a join the dots picture. We're effectively going to do the same thing for this guy. But rather than just joining the dots to each other, we're going to join them to what their kind of counterpart dot was. So joining it to its friend there, joining it to its friend here, and joining it to its friend here to make it kind of like a 3D box. Yeah. So... Taking that idea, going with this one here, okay? So each of the corners, we notably have a lot more corners now because we're dealing with an H, we're not just dealing with a box. Um, so this corner is going to end up off there. Hopefully you can see that. This corner is going to end up off there. This corner will go that way. This corner will go that way. They're all gonna go in the same direction effectively. This one will go here. This one will go here. This one I haven't paid any attention to because it's going to be like inside the letter form, which means we're not going to see it because this H that we've drawn out is at the front. Uh, this one is a corner. That one's going to go over here. These three corners aren't really necessary to do anything with though because they are going to be hidden by the letter form we already have. Okay. So from this point, then we just need to go and effectively join all of those together. So we join this guy. He goes down. We join these two down. We join that one up to the top of this bar here. Well, bottom of the bar technically. Join across the top, across the top here, and a horizontal line there. Looks pretty cute. It 
is not very easy when you start, you know, again, skills take time, take practice, but keep at it. If you get to a letter where you're just like, I don't know how this would look when I three-dimensionalize it, again, just literally Googling 3D letter font or something like that is going to be such a good resource, all right? It shows you exactly what that letter is supposed to look like and a lot of the different font generators you can find, you can actually type in your word. So going and putting some actual lines in here though. We're going to put in the outline of the front of the H because that one is going to be uninterrupted, which is nice. So there's the H there. And then we can do all of those lines that kind of backtrack off it, trying to keep them all running in a parallel direction. Uh, you don't have to, but I find it looks a lot better. And then joining those together also trying to make sure that they go back an equal like roughly equal distance so that then it doesn't look a little bit weird as well so looks pretty cute not too shabby from here again you can color it you can decorate it you can do all of that kind of stuff i'm going to show you an example of how you might want to use this style of lettering uh just need to remember which journal that one's in because <laughs> i seriously can't um i think it was blue there you are my child my child my son so this one kind of looks like this yeah um you can change up the uh direction of it if you want to like we've done here so each of these letters they don't necessarily go three-dimensional in the same way um this one kind of tilts back down to the right this one tilts down to the left this one tilts down to the right again so you can kind of change those up if you want to if you're doing it where it's kind of stacked like this you do kind of want to go one letter at a time uh it just makes it a little bit easier so i drew the j in first then the a then the n similar idea with rainbow over here i did the r then the a because you can see the r sits on top of the a and then a sits on top of i i sits on top of n so on and so forth but it can look very visually effective. Um, so that is one other possible lettering style. It takes a little bit more time, but it can be a bit of fun. Okay. Once it is dry, you erase the lines. This probably isn't dry, but we're going to erase them anyway. <laughs> oh, we didn't do too bad. Not too shabby. Um, and we could go in and like color stuff in on that if we want to. I'm just going to color in the kind of side panels of this. Leave the front just to be white uh whereas on the other letterings that i did for the rainbow theme i did it effectively the other way around and if you get any black on the nib of your pen you just need to clean it off <laughs> on a spare piece of paper there we go Blech. beautiful picture love it it looks like an elephant or at least i see an elephant there's its ear and there's its eye and there's its little trunk <laughs> anyway put that away so other possibilities because we love possibilities. We could do something very cute and simple, which is just a kind of regular lowercase. Uh, I don't even know what you would call this. It's kind of like a block style lettering, I suppose, but it's just lowercase. Yep. But then at the end of each of them, you could do a little kind of like little dot, little circle. And you could either do this in black like we're doing here, or you could do it uh, with the dot marker from before. That'd be kind of cute. There we go. Looking very sweet. Let's see. Actually have a surprise to give me. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> Related to me writing on the edge. <laughs> oh, you invented it because of me. I love that. I'm very excited and I'm excited to see you. I'm excited to see everybody go wild. It's going to be such a good time. I am so not even remotely close to being ready for it, but I'm still pumped. So thinking about dots and thinking about like different things we could do with them, you could also use your dot marker to make your lettering. Um, so for this one in particular, you could do something like making your letters quite bold and like sketching an outline of them and then filling in the outline with the dot markers, or you could just do dots for your lettering. So like H E A. If you're going to do this one, I would recommend taking more time with it than I am doing 
uh, and trying to make your dots a consistent uh, size and distance from each other, but I'm not doing that. <laughs> you know, each to their own. Uh, I still think it'll look cute. There we go. Header. That's kind of cute. And you could put, you know, more dots around the outside of that or whatever. Just make sure that you don't distract from the header itself. Um, jumping in during a study break. Nice. I hope that your study break is going well thus far. And I also hope that your studying is going far. Also, lots of ombre coloring. The bigger, smaller, bigger slash taller middle of the word and smaller at the ends. That'd be cute. Um, we haven't really talked a lot about, like, how to do an ombre. If you have certain pens... Um, then doing an ombre can be very, very easy. I find that with this one that I've picked in particular, it's not as easy. But if we grab, say, maybe this one. Let's check. Maybe not on this type of paper because it is kind of coated. I feel like I need to do this on, on a piece of paper that's not coated. Where would I find one of those? He, <laughs> Good luck, me. Does this, does this look like it might work? Let's see. So... Also depends on the color because that one's really quite punchy, isn't it? Let's find something that's a little bit more subdued. So depending on what type of paper and what type of pen you're using, this paper obviously isn't really playing the game either. I didn't really want to do it in here. Um, maybe I could do it. Oh, look, here are our examples from the, uh, what's the word? Thumbnail. So certain pen colors that you've got, you can do an ombre just with the pen itself by passing over multiple times. There we go. This works a lot better. <laughs> so you can kind of see how we have like a little gradient going here and you can use that within your lettering to put gradients in and such as well. So for instance, if we did like the word header, which I'm just going to do the H, um, you just take the lower half of the letter and you go over it a couple more times. So H and then H and then that kind of thing. And it gives you like a, a light gradient within your letter form, which is quite cute. That's something that we can do as well. I'm not going to be able to do it with the yellow because the yellow doesn't really layer that well. It's just kind of, oh, that was rude. Sorry, didn't mean to hit you. Um, let's see. You can do one pass over. Maybe it'll do. Ah, uh, doesn't do a terrible job of it. We can do something with that. So there's a, a, a light amount of gradienting there. Um, but for, for this one, I probably would pick a range of yellow pens and use them together to get a proper gradient going there. But that can look quite cute. Uh, yeah, we have a bunch of different little headers here that we haven't really done. Love that, though. But that's not that's not what we're doing here. <laughs> that's an aside. One of the lettering styles that I really love when people do, and I personally find quite tricky, uh, is kind of similar to this one, except instead of doing tight lining around the yellow, you offset it slightly. As said, I'm not very good at it, but we'll at least do the letter H with it because I feel like I could do I could do the letter H. She mused. So you start by putting down your header, whichever description of whatever it is, uh, you know, your word. And then instead of doing the outline where it is, you offset it. I'm going to try and offset mine lower and right because that's my preferred space. And you could pencil it in first and I probably would recommend that. I'm not going to do it because ha ha danger zone so we just make it so that then that goes effectively off to the side and there is a reason that I'm doing it in the order I'm doing it I'm using the letter as kind of a reference and trying to make it so that then I put this in roughly the right spot that looks pretty close Yay! All right? And you can kind of do that for every one of the letters. Uh, you can offset it in different directions and stuff if you want to. I am not good with randomized stuff, so I just find it very tricky. Um, but it can look really, really effective. And it also can be forgiving. I, I know that I'm saying, like, oh, it's hard and you need to, like, you know, offset it the right amount and whatever. You don't have to do that that way. It's just how I prefer to do them. I prefer it when they look a little bit more consistent. Um, another kind of lettering style that you could do is one that's kind of like just based on shapes. Uh, so if we did, I think I might be able to do this with boxes. So if we do a bunch of boxes, E, A, 
And I've just made my boxes roughly one centimeter by one centimeter. And when you come to do the actual lettering here, you effectively use the box as, as the letter itself. So for E, that's nice and easy. You just do this. There we go. That's an E. All right. So we can put both of the E's in. That's, that's simple. Um, when it comes to doing the D, we just put a line down the middle which if you don't want it to look kind of like an O, well, I mean, it's kind of from context, right? Like an O would be like this, but probably like that, even though that looks like an I in a box right now, but hopefully you kind of understand where we're going with that. So you could do it like that, or you could do possibly like that, and it would look kind of slightly more like a D, but... We're just going to infer from context that it says header, right? Are, you, are we sure that header is still a word? I'm pretty sure it's not. I'm pretty sure that we lost it being a word like here. <laughs> when it comes to doing the H, that would be a line from the top and the bottom. Um, and you can either leave it like that or you could probably put the lines in on the horizontal. I'm going to ch just check it over here to make sure it looks right before I commit to the bit. That was the wrong way around. <laughs> don't mind me I can I can remember what I came here to do so you could do it like this which I think I prefer even if it's only slightly done like that there we go so H E A would be like that and then R would look kind of similar There we go. So header, kind of like that. I mean, you don't have to do them as perfect boxes either. You could like slightly round the corner and stuff like that to make it look a little bit more like uh, uh, the letter form that you're trying for. But it is just like another way of doing it that's a little bit of fun, right? And that's that's the point of this, right? We're having a little bit of fun. Um, one of the styles that you could do, if, if we go with kind of like this as an example, is just really taking your regular lettering we're going to just do a simple all caps deal here and then just capping it off on either end so that could be something as simple as just doing kind of like a little square parentheses type moment or you could do something a little bit more kind of like decorative and add some little lines to it or whatnot if you wanted to something kind of cute something kind of simple doesn't require a lot of extra work for that one which is nice um let's see if we go with a kind of lowercase but like a little bit kind of bouncy and fun and then you can just put some little kind of dots in between them to kind of fill in some space so that then it all kind of sits roughly in line with each other and you can go and add some like you know drop shadowing to that or you could do an outline or something like that just keep it pretty pretty chill pretty simple let's see I think we're gonna do at least three more and I'm gonna try and make them something that doesn't really fit with what we've done so far so if there's anything that you feel we're missing you, you let me know Let's see. Inside serifs are interesting looking. I know, right? <laughs> like, it does look a little bit curious. So like we've kind of talked about, you can just do a different style of lettering in general. And we kind of did the stitched lettering here. And I kind of like that. So we're going to do something similar to that, but we're going to do it kind of... We're going to do... You can tell that I just really like simple all caps. <laughs> I actually don't write in all caps usually. Most of the time I write in, I don't know, I can't even remember what it is. I'm going to call it Comic Sans. It's not what I mean. But for this one, we're going to do a stitched outline effectively. So you start with the regular block letter like we did, and then you just go and do a small dashed line all the way around the outside 
This would be really good for any kind of lettering style that you're using, which is very large, um, because then you have a little bit more room to play with with your stitching, which is kind of nice. Uh, you don't have to try quite as hard to keep it inside the lines, because for this one you do want to keep the dashed line inside of the yellow, because it's making the yellow piece look like it was stitched onto the page, which is kind of cute. And you can also do this with the, uh, like banners and kind of boxes and stuff instead if you don't want to do it on the letters themselves you can just add a small dashed line around the side of a box make it look like a stitched on box which is cute too Whee! it can be time consuming this is not for subtitles <laughs> unless you want to spend quite a lot of time doing stuff I find that my default go-to for subtitles is usually just this style again um, because it is very simple. I've been practicing it enough that it's something that I can do quite quickly and quite easily. Or I will just do that serif style that we did here because that one is just a little bit more elevated compared to my regular kind of, I'm going to call it my everyday writing even though it's not my everyday writing, my everyday bullet journal writing, uh, which is just an all caps but you kind of separated it out, made it look a little bit more special by adding in those serifs, which is cute. So, add this guy in, looking so well. Let's see, if you have a question for me, oh yes, please do tag me if you have a question. I love questions. And also, if you have a question that isn't specifically about the lettering stuff that we've got going on here, like, happy to answer it, always love a good question little Q&A moment. There we go. Put that R in. My phone's buzzing. I don't know why. I'm not going to check it, but I would like it to stop yelling at me, sir. There we go. We'll just put that on. Do not disturb because we are busy. Thank you. Oh, my boy. Is that the summer sun dot marker? Yes. I believe it is. Let's see. Summer Sun, I know, yep, yeah, Summer Sun, it definitely is, um, and this is Tombow 025, these guys are a really good match for each other, I find, so I like to use them together. It's really strange, because yellow is not what I would consider one of my favourite colours, but I do seem to gravitate towards it a lot in my journal, and I think it's because it's punchy, like, it looks very good with black, and I like that kind of contrast together. So... For our next header, we are going to do something cute, always. Now, we did have a question about doing possibly like a curved kind of banner. Um, I find that possibly one of the easiest ways to do a curved banner is to give yourself like a guideline to work with, uh, whether that be with pencil or what I'm going to do here, which is effectively just like curving your header wherever you want it to go. I'm going to put it here <laughs> and then just writing inside of that. All right, so I'm going to try and make it so that my letters are a similar distance apart from each other. But that one can be a nice way to just fit inside of an individual space. And if you wanted to, you could go and outline that and turn it into kind of like a, a little uh, ribbon banner type thing here. You're trying to do a knitting theme. What type of headers would you do if you had that theme? If I was doing knitting, I would probably, you know, like when you see a ball of yarn, like a drawn ball of yarn, not probably a real one, and they have like the yarn ball like this, and I'm going to draw this very poorly because it's kind of off the cuff, but they do the kind of like lines within it that go in different directions, like this, and then like that, because the yarn's like wrapped up onto itself. Again, this is poorly drawn, but hopefully you can kind of see what I mean with this. Yeah. And then they have like the string that comes out of it. Eee, string. Kind of a thing. You know that type of like <laughs> picture of, of a ball of yarn? I would probably want to do a lettering style that would fit with something like this pattern. And by this pattern, I mean much neater than this. So if I was going to do like a block letter type deal, do something where it has that pattern inside of it, where you just do diagonal lines in one direction for a bit, and then you turn it and do diagonal lines in a different direction for a bit. 
I'm doing this very fast to kind of show you what I mean. But if you take your time with it and make the distance between those lines a little bit more consistent, it can end up looking very cute. You also don't have to do it in black and yellow, for one thing. Black and yellow, black and yellow. Um, which can end up looking maybe a little bit more heavy. But you could do it in a more kind of like pastel color palette. But it kind of gives you that like wrapped up yarn kind of look to it. So I would possibly go with something kind of like that. That would be kind of cute with a bit nicer of, of a pattern over the other side. Um, that would be kind of cute. Let's see. Uh, cable stitch. Cable stitch. Oh, is that... I don't know what a cable stitch is, but is that the kind of one where it goes, like, around the outside like that? Because <laughs> that would be kind of a cute lettering style, too, I think, if you wanted to do something like this. Um, I know that's not necessarily knitting related. Yeah, you could do a ball of yarn where the yarn end of the yarn makes a word. That'd be kind of cute too. So it's like you've got like your ball of yarn and then it comes off and goes like, which you would probably not do with a dot marker. You would probably do it with a Tombow bullet end. That would also be kind of cute. Um, cable stitch looks like it's braided. Alrighty, I don't know obviously what cable stitch is. I don't do a lot of stitching. <laughs> But I think that, that one that we kind of looked at before would be another cute way to, to do. I'm just going to do the H here. Um, and I'm thinking in particular for the type that I was thinking about. Maybe it's called blanket stitch. Je ne sais pas. Does not sew. Um, you would go around the outside to start with, with all of the little lines coming in. Because the thing with the type of stitching that I'm thinking of, whatever it's called, uh, you kind of end up with um, like a not perfectly straight edge. So I wouldn't want to do the edge of the letter first, if that kind of makes sense. So you'd go and put all of these little guys in, which kind of looks a little bit tiger-like, which is kind of cute. And then join those together, like with a slight curve to it. Doesn't need to be a huge curve, like very gentle curve. Kind of a thing. But that might be kind of cute. And we don't want it to look like it has, like, I don't know, too many rolls or anything. So just a very gentle curve. I have over-exaggerated a couple of mine, uh, so it's not quite right. But it wouldn't be perfectly straight. There we go. Little, little lumpy boy. So cute. It looks like a yam. Happy little yam. <laughs> little, little yam letters. <laughs> yeah, see, there we go. It's blanket stitch. I half know what I'm talking about sometimes. How did you come up with your more witchy slash celestial font? This is another one where looking for fonts online is the best idea. So if you're thinking about the, the lettering style that I'm thinking of, the one that I used in, like, I don't know, my uh, yearly collections journal, Last year, if we if we open open the cheeky boy up and has a look at it, so people know what we're talking about, uh, this guy here, this one is a font from online. I did not come up with this; I just drew it in my journal. Um, so this one is called Bones, like B O W N S B O Bones B O W N S and Z. No, not Z. Yeah, Z. Um, but this one is a lot of looking for things like if you try and do like. Witchy font, rune-inspired fonts are really good for ones that um, are, are quite easy to draw. So like runes, witchy-inspired fonts, anything like that I find can be really, really good. Um, so yeah, this one I did like a combination of the witchy type thing and then just a regular serif type deal. I kind of paired them together in this one, um, depending on which part I was up to, but it works quite well. I think that font does not have numbers. So for the majority of the numbers, I effectively just kind of took elements of it and then just like, like we do three. So one of the elements that that lettering style had a lot of was just like crossing. It's effectively a serif, but the serif isn't actually at the end. And it also had a lot of crosses in it. So I just kind of like combined parts of those together and stuff to make letters that they didn't have in the lettering style. So those ones are really good to look for. So anything that's like rune inspired, Aztec inspired, um, witchy type fonts, 
oftentimes you'll find some really good ones that can be done in your journal without having to be like, I don't know, a master calligrapher, if that makes sense. All right. Yeah. Alrighty. Stock, stock, stitch, stock, stocking net stitch. I can't read. <laughs> like, I'm sure if I knew what knitting was or knew how to knit more, I would know more about this. Um, yeah, it kind of does look like a little kind of cloud. I was thinking, not going to lie, intestines, but I'll take cloud because cloud looks cuter. Like it makes more sense. Um, so what else do we have? Uh, it's also good to say that like for a lettering style that you're doing, you don't actually have to change up a lot to make it look quite interesting too. So for instance, if we did header as a word, um, so H, we do E, but instead of doing the bar on the E, we just do a dot. Like that already makes it look a little bit interesting. Um, if instead of an A with a line, we do an A with a dot, you could do that, or you could just turn your A into a small triangle type thing. Um, so that can be one way that you do it. Like it doesn't need to be a huge change to look quite interesting. Like it 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 hits different type of a thing. Um, similar idea with the R, like you could make that a little bit more angular. Do an R like that type thing. So it's like, it still says header. Like you can still see that it says header. Uh, you've just changed it up ever so slightly. All right. Um, I'm going to do like another little kind of cute one here. But this one in particular, I like to use a pencil for first because I find that an oval shape that actually stays oval is tricky for me. So <laughs> draw your little oval shape and then do a little flick off the side. And now it's a speech bubble. Beautiful. All right. We can put this one in with pen. So little flick. And then put that oval in, turning your journal so that it is as comfortable as possible we go and we can just write the word header in there and if need be put in an exclamation point to fill space <laughs> so cute and then erase your lines once everything's dry so let's see we probably have like a little bit more space here so we could do we could do one more type of a thing i think that'd be kind of cute uh so we could also okay one thing that you could do if you wanted to do something that was like a little bit decorative but you didn't want to do decorative for the whole entire word you could just make the first letter quite decorative um i don't know what they're called but you know in the old timey books that have the very elaborate first letter um that that's kind of what we're thinking here you do not have to make it quite that elaborate but it is a general vibe you could try and aim for um so making that first letter a little bit special i'm just going to do a box of color i'm not going to make it too too fancy because i'm not like a, a master letterer by any stretch of the imagination um and then we're gonna do e a d e uh, and once this is dry, we will be able to write the H in. Illuminated letters, like neon sign type letters, that'd be kind of cool. I think that there are some really cool tutorials online that show you how to do that with like different um, uh, markers or whatever else. I find that the best ones are often the ones that, where people are using either like a paint marker or, or a gel pen or something, because you can really get that kind of like punchy white in the center of the letter and it looks quite good. Um, I'm going to do just a H, and then it doesn't have to touch the other one. I mean, mine's almost touching it, so I feel like I want to make it, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to do it. Um, that looks pretty cute. Alrighty, team. So, like, like we said, not all of your headers have to be exactly the same. You don't have to use the same style of lettering for everything. You can if you want to. We're not going to stop you. Alrighty? So... <laughs> illuminated letters. I'm glad that you guys know what I'm you're talking about because I'm just confused. Um, but seriously, neon sign letters are really cool. Um, <laughs> so when it comes to doing your lettering in your journal, you don't have to use the same thing. 
you can do pretty much any of these styles and just change up the font if you want to. Like you can do the little dotted header but using cursive if you would like to. Uh, you can put little dots into a cursive header or vice versa or whatever else, all right? Go find yourself some good font inspiration online because it is there as a very excellent resource. If you found this enjoyable, if you found it fun, or if you found it useful, do make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And we will be back next week with another live stream on a different topic. Topic TBC, right? The team with a capital T is going to tell me what it's going to be about. So we have to wait and see what they say. Thanks for being here, team. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.